The most important thing to consider when implementing diversity initiatives is not whether they sound good on paper or whether other organisations are using them. Instead, we must examine how effective the initiatives are at resolving the issues at hand. With this in mind, let's take a look at the efficacy of unconscious bias training and find out if it will help you to reduce bias at your business. There is already a wealth of research on unconscious bias training that we can draw from, and unfortunately, it paints a pretty drab picture. The first thing we should note is that researchers failed to find any lasting positive change that follows the use of unconscious bias training. In fact, hundreds of studies dating back to the 1930s suggest that anti-bias training doesn't reduce bias or change the workplace. In December of 2020, the British government released a statement in which they said that the UK civil service would be phasing out the use of unconscious bias training after they commissioned a report which found that there is currently no evidence that this training changes behaviour in the long term or improves workplace equality in terms of representation of women, ethnic minorities or other minority groups. Where training has managed to cause changes in unconscious bias, measured by the IAT, research has not found that such changes have any effect on behaviour. This disheartening finding could well be due to the fact that the link between unconscious bias and behaviour is tenuous at best. Research has also failed to demonstrate that the unconscious bias measured by the IAT is really to blame for ongoing inequalities or prejudicial behaviour within our society. And the implicit association test, which research has developed to uncover hidden biases against identity groups, is fundamentally flawed. To find out more about the problems with the IAT, check out our video on this topic. All in all, it seems unconscious bias training is unlikely to provide a solution to diversity issues or discrimination in the workplace. And even more worryingly, there is some evidence that it can have a negative effect. This will depend, of course, on the exact type of training that is being utilised. If the training is mandatory, encourages you to try and suppress biased thoughts, includes the use of the IAT, or if the training tries to directly combat hidden issues by pressuring people to admit that they are biased against certain groups, then there is a chance that the training may actually increase bias at your workplace, inhibit the interactions between people of different identity groups, and cause resentment or hostility. As well as the poor evidence base of unconscious bias training, there are some other troubling aspects to consider. Many courses attempt to force people to accept ideas that they don't really believe to be true. For example, the training might start off by making the factual claim that everyone has biases. The implicit or sometimes explicit suggestion is that everyone who takes the course must therefore be biased against particular identity groups. This is where the training starts to lose its factual grip. Yes, we all have biases. To be human is to be biased as we all have preferences, likes and dislikes, and we have to make judgments in order to make decisions. And yes, sometimes these biases are outside of our conscious awareness. It is also true that these biases can be against identity groups, but this is not necessarily the case. The fact that humans are biased does not mean that all humans hold biases that are based upon immutable characteristics like race, gender and sexual orientation. Understandably then, employees who do not feel that they harbour hidden biases against particular identity groups might feel resistance to training programmes that force them to accept this as if it's a fact. This may even result in resentment that circumvents the positive impact that diversity initiatives could be achieving. Ultimately, pressuring people as a means of reducing bias in the workplace is a misguided starting point and this is only made worse when the training that is implemented has not been proven to work in any tangible way. So, if your business wants to foster an inclusive, diverse and harmonious environment, then unconscious bias training is best left out of the picture. 